In this module, we will cover partnerships and the obligations of partners. Having gone into some detail regarding the theory and practice behind the private limited company, this module looks in greater depth at the main non-corporate business media, partnerships, excluding the limited liability partnership, which is a hybrid of company and partnership law concepts, and which will be dealt with in the final module of this presentation. The Partnership Act 1890 sets out the basic rules that apply to this type of business organisation. All the statute sections which I refer to in this video are references to the Partnership Act, unless I specify otherwise. So let's start with definition. Section 1 of the Act defines partnership as follows. A partnership is the relation which subsists between persons carrying on a business in common with a view of profit. It follows that there are three elements to a partnership. It's the relationship which subsists between persons carrying on a business in common with a view of profit. Business. Two or more persons, including legal persons, such as a company, must be carrying out a commercial venture or business, which the Act defines as every trade, occupation or profession. Excluded, therefore, would be charitable organisations and social clubs, etc. An agreement to run a business in the future would likewise be excluded from the definition of partnership. The business must be carried out in common. This means that every general partner must be allowed to have a say in management and if kept out of the management, they will have a right to dissolve the firm unless the partnership agreement limits their right to manage. The ownership of property in common does not of itself constitute a partnership. A supplier of goods to a partnership, for example, would be associated with the partnership, but would not be a partner himself. Also, unrelated joint owners of a building will not be liable for each other's debts. The business must be carried on with a view of profit. If a partnership is formed with some other predominant motive, but there is also a real profit element, even if it is ancillary, then the business itself is still being carried on with a view of profit and a partnership can exist. The sharing of profits is only prima facie evidence of the existence of a partnership, however. It does not automatically make the recipient a partner. Joint tenancy, tenancy in common, joint pro-partnership, property, common property or part ownership does not of itself create a partnership. Also, the sharing of gross returns does not of itself create a partnership.